Greetings in the Lord, everyone. My name is Karen, mother of four beautiful children named Kelly, Daniel, Scott, and Rhonda. They gave me nine adorable grandchildren whom I love dearly. I, like you, was born into the world without any permission, of course, and none of us asked to be here, right? But yet, here we are, faced to navigate this, navigate this maze we call life. Everyone has a story, and here's mine. I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and then tell you of the grace, and mercy, and love of God in my journey. As I said, I was born and tripped through life until God caught me in the early 70s. I was born in Omaha, Nebraska, moved to Ottawa, Iowa. I was the baby of four children. My family was dirt poor, and most of the time we lived on government surplus. As a kid, that did not affect my joy of experiencing childhood. You'd always find me barefoot, wearing a dress with play guns and holsters, and loving the outdoors. Times got pretty tough, though, financially, and we couldn't survive in the small town of Ottawa. So a decision was made to move to Newton, Iowa, the home of the Maytag Company. Life was better. Dad had a full-time job, and my mother was a songwriter for Acuff Rose Opera Land. I would demo her songs to send them to Nashville in hopes of getting a star to record them. Long story short, I graduated from high school in Newton, Iowa, and eventually fell in love with my firstborn son's father, Bill. Thus, love created a beautiful baby boy named Kelly. You know him as your pastor, Pastor Kelly. Jetting forward through recording my mother's songs and music, I realized I wanted to sing for a living. So, I traveled to Nashville, Tennessee to become a star in the music business. But God had other plans. Story too long to go into in lieu of time, but I went from being a solo act to a duo act with another singer from Birmingham, Alabama that had the same aspirations I had. The William Morris Agency booked us together, and I wound up getting saved in a Southern Baptist church because of that boy named Don Willis. Reverend Blackhead was the pastor there at the church, and I had to laugh at his name. It's a name I could never forget. But I remember uh, I got saved that day. Did I always do everything right once I got saved? No. But I do know that Jesus will never abandon his children, and he will never leave us or forsake us. No matter how many mistakes we make, he's always there to forgive us when we repent of our ways. I've learned to trust him, pray to him, and have faith in his finished work upon the cross. One of the finished works was he died for our healing. Here is my journey that I'm giving you testimony about today. I hope your faith will be strengthened when you hear my story and that you will see and feel Jesus in a different way. I pray you will help, he would help you to focus on not your problem, but on the problem solver. I'm no stranger to pain, and I'm sure you're not either. Before I begin, I'd like to say this. I believe the enemy has it in for us, or has it had it in for us ever since the day we were born, and I'm convinced now more than ever that Jesus knew us before we were born. Doesn't the word say that he formed us in our mother's womb? I believe that there has been a battle ongoing for our souls from the minute the doctor said it's a boy or it's, in my case, it's a girl. Let me ask you, if he created us in our mother's wombs, tell me, why wouldn't we trust him with our healing? He says, I will not give you more than you can bear in our storms in life. And those storms force us to depend on God. I want to share my story with you so that you might believe for yourselves in times of trouble, sickness, and disease. Jesus is with you in the storm. However, in our human frailty, after a season, we feel pretty battered by the storms in our life. Sometimes we just want to fold up our tents and go home. But where is home? Where can we rest? Where can we get relief? When the storm is so turbulent, and it's turbulent enough, uh, and you fought such a good fight, all you want to do is go home. You want to quit, sometimes, before you get the victory. Have you ever thought that the storms that you were going through might be that God wants to show himself real through your suffering, so that your test can be a testimony to others? Maybe the storm is a way of teaching you to depend on him to do what God can do, perform a miracle. I think in life we can become complacent and take for granted the very breath we breathe that he has given us. We fail to serve him like we should. We get caught up in routines that rarely include boasting about his goodness and grace to others. We sometimes fail to serve him in acts of kindness, in word and deed. I know there are times that I have been guilty of not serving him well. In my health crises this last year, I got to know the power and love of Jesus in a different way. He shows up when you least expect it, through others. I believe we have angels that he sends to us in the form of doctors or nurses, perhaps a chaplain through your sons and daughters, a dear friend, maybe through someone you haven't heard him from in years, or perhaps a stranger. The biggest thing I learned was to surrender. Let go and let God show himself real in my storm. My journey this last year was a trip to the emergency room in such pain. To die would have been a great relief. Took numerous tests to get to the cause of my pain. 
After scans and numerous tests to include blood work and everything that you go through, and some of you know what I'm talking about, the doctor came back into the room to say, I don't think you're going to like what I have to tell you. He proceeds to tell me, I'm most certain the tests are telling us you have cancer and you need to see a doctor right away. This was on a weekend. No doctor's office is open. This man took it upon himself. Unbeknownst to me, he arranged for me to see one of the best oncologists for this type of cancer. Did he have to do that? No, but God was in the storm from the get-go, and he was my angel. I called my sons about my health condition, and they worked out a way to be my caregivers throughout this process. They tag-teamed my, my care, honoring their mother, and I felt so blessed and still do. Scott, Kelly's brother, within six hours showed up at my front door to take on me on the start of this journey into the unknown. And they had to wonder, will their mother live or die? I was a class four stage of ovarian cancer. I remember so vividly when I met the doctor in Springfield for the first time. He said, we're going to have to admit you right away. Exploratory surgery exposed the cancer being in different portions of my body to include ovaries, diaphragm, bladder, and appendix. Got me admitted to the hospital and doctor said, this is the treatment I recommend. No time to waste. He offered up chemo for several weeks to shrink tumors or have immediate surgery and then chemo. I remember saying, in the chair by the hospital bed seeking God as what I should do. They knew it was God I was talking to. And finally, the word spewed from my lips. I said to Jesus, I'm in it to win it. What did that mean? To me, it meant your will be done, Lord. You formed me in my mother's womb and you are not surprised at this diagnosis. I trust you because either way I win. I go home to be with you or I experience a closer walk with you through this. But one thing sure, I will witness for you, Lord, in and throughout this duration of this journey. So the journey with chemo began several weeks. What a valley that was, but Jesus saw me through. I had surgery after several weeks of chemo, major robotic surgery, removing as much of the cancer as they could see, which meant ovaries, tubes, appendix, and removing part of the lining that covers the abdominal wall. The amazing part, after the surgery, I tried to avoid the major addictive pain meds because you know how serious that can be, and I was able to cope with Tylenol for four days. While in the hospital, I got C. diff. I had to stay much longer than planned. Horrific experience. 39 days in the hospital. Got home. Kept getting bladder infections, which was a big concern because they saw no end to it. Medicines weren't working, but prayer reached God. I was so sick at the time, and I just, just felt like an absolute pin cushions, IVs going everywhere. My white count was so low, hard to fight infections, shots in the stomach twice a day, IVs everywhere, C. diff. Finally got home, and then I got a blood clot on my right lung. Such intense pain could have caused a pulmonary embolism, which would have caused a heart attack. Got on blood thinners, finally got of them. I no more got over suffering from that, and I got diagnosed with COVID. My daughter called the medics and got me to the hospital. A ride back to the hospital in an ambulance. When those doors slammed behind me in the hospital in the COVID unit, you certainly don't know what to expect. You mean, Lord, I went through all this, and this could take me out? This indeed can test your faith, right? Another challenge. Met nurses and doctors. One nurse saved my life. I would say was my angel. I was on a drug that I shouldn't have been on that could have taken my life when I was in the COVID unit. It could have, this drug could have filled up my lungs with fluid and stopped my kidneys from functioning. He talked to my doc the very next day and he took me off of it. The doctor took me completely off of it. My white count got so low that the doctor was talking about bone marrow injections. A lot of the doctors and nurses were praying for me, a lot of Christians in there. And uh, my sons were driving hundreds of miles seeing to their mama. After 44 days in the hospital, two major surgeries, chemo, blood clots, and COVID, here I am standing here today because you prayed for me. Prayer shawls that were made for me from the church that I laid over my body to believe God for my healing, and I absolutely felt the power of God underneath those shawls. All because of you, your prayers, and God's grace and mercy. Jesus was with me every step of the way. I felt his presence. Bottom line, faith is the substance of things hoped for and not seen. Concentrate on Jesus and not the problem, and you will understand that he will not give you more than you can bear. Concentrate on who he is and what he has done for us. If we truly believe he is the resurrection and the life, we will get through any storm the devil throws at us. Faith enables us to be a witness for Jesus in and throughout the storm. It all begins with our salvation. Faith in Jesus got us saved and faith in Jesus can get us healed. I have to say I was peaceful knowing that I was saved, so no matter what the outcome, I wasn't afraid. He's given me a second chance.
We're going to meet him face to face someday and be held accountable for the way we served him. He gave me a word a while back and I'll share it with you today. God bless you and thank you for your prayers.